Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Matos, Education and Technology Director for Chicago Citywide Literacy Coalition and manager of this. What I've learned uh, is just a great project to have the Illinois Digital Learning Lab, the Innovative Experiment Building Self Efficacy for Teachers and Learners in Digital Literacy and Technology Integration. We're building action committees, we're building learning circles, we're building collaborative groups throughout the state of Illinois and looking at digital literacy and technology integration. I wanna start off first by, um, in this presentation, you will see a link uh, on the third slide of the this presentation and also a link to our Jamboard, which hopefully um, as you're looking through this presentation and listening to the presentation, you're also going from tab to tab and completing some of the activities, which I have some examples for you already built in here um, for answering. Um, just to look at one of the first questions on the Jamboard. And obviously, if um, you have not used Jamboard before, I'll go through a couple of things, but um, you can see how um, the responses are generated here. What is one word that would describe how you felt and how instructors felt uh, when you had to teach remotely during the pandemic? And of course, this was pretty sudden for many. Um, so looking at that and responding either with a pen um, where you can click on it and uh, write and probably um, easier for others <laughs> um, as we look through this um, and be able to put your response that way and go back and Erase it if you like, um, as well as um, using a sticky uh, note here, picking your favorite color, putting in your response. That's how these were generated, or putting in a picture where you can actually even take a picture of yourself or anything else um, and easily. Um, insert it into the Jamboard, which um, is a great way for our students to communicate as well and be part of what's going on in this particular Jamboard. Um, and we also have shapes where we can draw shapes and add uh, text to it, as well as a the text box there, and you can obviously incorporate this with the shape. And uh, so a lot of involvement that can happen here. And with my favorite writer here, which is um, a uh, basically where you're pointing and uh, bringing attention to certain things uh, within your presentation. Um, and so on. So uh, the little laser um, in the text box, the shapes, the picture, sticky notes, uh, you got your eraser and your pen. And of course, um, as we go through this, I will keep reminding you to come in here and um, add some more of your own responses. It's, it can never get too full, full because we can um, move things around quite a bit, especially if you add a sticky note or a picture, um, we can uh, move things around. And for example, if I add this one and then close this, because I'm not going to add any more, obviously I can move these. Okay. Um, so hopefully you'll stay engaged with that Jamboard as we go through the presentation here. And well, that's my introductions. Um, our DLL manager 
and a little bit of what we're going to be talking about, um, some of the information we have in here, uh, meet the IDL, right? The background, the data. Um, and then I'm going to talk um, some added pieces that I put in here of other presentations. And since they can't be with me here today, some of our um, subject matter experts that are part of this project, uh, Joy Pack talking about instructor efficacy and the Building Better Bridges, Digital Bridges uh, cohort in our current Illinois Digital Learning Lab. Uh, this team ran by uh, David Rose, internationally uh, known uh, digital literacy technology integration expert um, consultant uh, that's working as one of our subject matter experts. And um, just digital literacy, uh, not a skill, uh, a language uh, with Colleen Stribling and uh, one of her presentations when she was an IDLO uh, participant from, I believe, uh, Elgin Community College. Uh, so a little bit about the, as I go to presentation mode, about the uh, mission of the organization, Chicago Citywide Literacy Coalition, uh, that with the great um, help of the um, Grand Victoria Foundation has uh, been able to put the Illinois Digital Learning Lab together and run it for three years now. The CCLC helps Chicago's adult education organization secure resources and training so that uh, underserved adult learners can become economically su successful. And it reframes adult basic education as a critical public policy issue. And um, we are extremely involved in digital literacy. Um, an estimated 2.2 million Illinois adults or 18% of the population have limited skills in reading, writing, math, and English proficiency. And this is part of the problem. Digital school uh, tools, they offer that promise to improve the effectiveness and reach of adult education. So for many adults, education is the most accessible, affordable avenue for mobility. And in today's economy, continual learning and critical thinking skills are crucial for success. 32 million US adults are not digitally literate and over 80% of adult educator, education learners have less than basic computing skills um, as they come into our programs. IDLO is a cohort-based professional development model um, supported, as I mentioned earlier, uh, by Grand Victoria Foundation, uh, helps adult educators uh, and learners build digital literacy skills. Um, and this is an environment where learner and instructor learn together while creating technology-rich learning environments for adult learners. Um, you know, technology can be a powerful tool uh, for transforming learning and adult education, and we all have to see it as that and make sure that it's part of our instruction. Um, my first question on my Jamboard, I feel confident that I could create, actually the second question, I feel confident that I could create meaningful learning experience to motivate my students for virtual active involvement. Remember your participation on the Jamboard is totally anonymous. So um, go ahead and um, give me a yes, no, maybe, uh, and maybe more detail to that. The Illinois Digital Learning Lab is an innovative experiment. It, we're integrating digital lit lit literacy skills and technology integration through the development and implementation of best practices. And these best practices come through experimenting, uh, meeting those obstacles, learning ways to uh, work around those obstacles. Um, so, it's it's a learning environment like no other. Uh, the Illinois Digital Learning Lab was focused on, on is focused on curating a collaborative peer-to-peer -peer learning environment for sharing strategies and encourage educators to take charge of their technology professional development. Um, some of our core elements support adult education effectively, incorporating learning technology into the classroom, and we use these subject matter experts and curated resources uh, that we've put together and reached out to publishers to see if they would help us in learning and experimenting with these um, resources. A facilitated learning community for educators and administrators to support, advise, and learn from each other uh, and from the resources they find valuable. Um, it's a community of learning. So we need everyone involved. We need a buy-in from 
um, the educator up to the administrator to the program levels. Uh, participating uh, educators act as entrepreneurs, uh, research digital tools, and experiment with a range of technologies in the classroom. And our intent is for educators to also reimagine their roles as innovators and technology advocates. And our current program, or actually, this is the second year of the, the first year of the two year program, which is the our, our third project um, years, uh, I could say for this one, uh, it's actually going from 2020 to 2022. And we just completed our 2020 21 year um, at the end of July. Uh, we are continuing with 30 educators, or some of them are administrators from 25 organizations throughout Illinois. We have five subject matter experts supporting uh, uh, five uh, cohorts, each with six mem members in them. Um, and it, it includes a diverse set of participants, the type of organization, their role, their curriculum, their geographic location, their student demographics. We want them to be as diverse as possible. And we wanna make sure that the cohorts reflect this. Uh, cohorts meet monthly via Zoom. Um, and it's not a COVID thing. We've been doing this for years before COVID. Participants, uh, if needed, adjust hypotheses, goals, and metrics. Um, at the beginning of each of the three sprints, which are about four months long, and we call them sprints because we do uh, come out running and we explore, experiment, and, and build um, to make them uh, best practices. Uh, the full community gathers for uh, three peer-to-peer -peer events, uh, a launch, a midpoint, uh, midpoint, and closing events where we share obstacles and successes uh, and other ideas, um, help each other to collaborate and incorporate if needed. Um, a number of metrics that we've covered in the past, uh, these goals that were set and how we gauged um, you know, the frequency of technology use through uh, self-reported surveys, a lot of them put together on uh, Google Forms, keyboard and typing improvement, which is, was more uh, of a quantitative word per minute um, using uh, resources like typing.com, how to navigate a tablet, uh, typing and keyboarding skills, um, how to use Google Docs, um, you know, looking at uh, PowerPoint for vocabulary, Excel spreadsheets, you know, how to create a file, share a file, how to access educational uh, resources online, like, for example, North Star, um, you know, a, a quantitative number of students who accomplish the, the, the metrics, right, or the goal set, the assessment set, um, and then we, we look at how to capture a metric and, and survey and observe our students to see what is in need. Uh, number of students contributing to, for example, a newsletter, a very quantitative uh, idea. Class attendance rates, another quantitative. Uh, Pre-post surveys on technology comfort, very qualitative, but it tells us a lot. Um, looking at uh, the use of the Linkert scale, uh, around student confidence, looking at that and building these technology surveys uh, that ask, do you feel more confident in your computer and internet skills? No, not at all, a little, some, quite a bit, a lot. Um, may not need to define a confidence for, for lower levels, but, um, but it's, it's nice to know. It, it might bring some surprises. Um, Next question in the Jamboard, I feel confident I can regularly incorporate technology into my lessons. Um, yes, no, or maybe. So IDL supports uh, teaching effectiveness. It increases learner engagement. It accelerates learning. It closes the technology gap. So adult learners gain these 21st century skills um, and students, um, when they can't reach these in-person services, uh, we don't want them to be unattainable. We want them to have the option of the virtual aspect or hybrid. IDLO has developed technology integration leaders who could support future professional development at local levels. They've established the importance of access, uh, assessing digital literacy skills and instruction. 
supported educators and learners in reaching curricular and individual goals and, and helped adult learners become more confident in using technology both within and beyond the classroom. And these are things we're very proud of. And these are things that we have the support uh, quantitative and qualitative as we looked at these various ways to engage our students. Um, we, we look at adopting an always learning culture. So, so students, teachers, and administrators, they continue to build on their skills and just their ideas and their, their importance that revolves around digital literacy and technology integration. We offer a variety of training methods uh, and supports, you know, with lecturing, modeling, uh, exploratory, hands-on learning. Uh, we lead with learning, not with technology. The stories we tell, um, you know, they focus on our learners um, and we, we keep our eyes on the prize, you know, our learners, their success um, and their completion of their goals um, through digital literacy and technology integration. We provide many avenues for key stakeholders to be involved. Um, and we make sure that uh, the deans, the directors, the um, senior directors, the coordinators are involved in this process. Communicate regularly and keep the vision at the forefront. Uh, you know, it, we, we run across challenges and our cohorts and, and encounter challenges, but we work through them. And this is where we become stronger as we built um, this process of delivering the professional development that grows into these models where we bring back more for our students. Um, some of our takeaways, um, and these are very important to point out, our, our cohorts feel ready to be leaders in technology integration and professional development efforts. Um, we, many of our, um, our participants have um, participated in COAB and LINX and IASA sessions, um, and they've just contributed so much. Many of them started presenting while they were in IDLL during our, our midpoint uh, meetings. Prepared uh, to take lead on future challenges at colleges and CBOs. Uh, educators prepared for the challenges of remote learning. Students prepared at, and many had less downtime and experience highlighted important, the importance of digital literacy and skills, especially when the pandemic came, many of our instructors have already moved a lot of their um, learning um, virtually or had it ready to move even further virtually and have their students working from their phones, their mobile devices um, from home, on the bus, from in school. Um, Early digital uh, literacy efforts, um, you know, they became lifelines for us as we moved into the pandemic and uh, teachers were uh, able to, to keep moving with the changes. Digital literacy instruction is possible at any and all levels. And we learned a lot about this. Engagement outside the class requires modeling and consistency um, and meeting and communicating with your students. Uh, routine integration of tech increases likelihood it will be used outside the class. And we saw a lot of that as we saw students being able to download an app and start working and collaborating with us with the same software or platform that we've been using for learning in the classroom. Establishing uh, we are all learners and can diffuse confidence issues and reluctance to try if, if we, we show our learners that we are learning with them. Um, that we're all in this learning environment. Um, and just some other uh, takeaways, um, you know, the unconditional support among teams, uh, these cohorts, uh, they work together as one cohort, but then they all work as an Illinois Digital Learning Lab project. And um, they, they met many of the challenges that were presented um, throughout the project. The uh, instructors and students were flexible and adaptable to the changes and the experimenting, the going back and forth with different, different surveys and so on. We find, purchase, and test out with our students and ask us, assess the um, success of a wide range of technologies. Um, some of the uh, more innovative ones are uh, VR headsets with hand controls to teach writing. Um, 
the smart speakers, uh, the Google Hubs, the Alexa, uh, to teach um, spelling and phonics and also writing. Uh, learn new platforms and improve our personal and professional digital skills. Um, and we keep students engaged and, and have found to improve attendance. And I just uh, had to put in some of our quotes by both participants in IDL instructors, administrators, and even some of our learners um, for you as we look through this um, and, and look at uh, some of those as well. Um, uh, next question on your Jamboard, professional development needs, understanding the different courses, approaches to teaching and learning with technology. We pose this in surveys for our instructors, administrators are a part of uh, IDLL, those IDLL participants. Uh, we pose these pre-questions to gauge what type of professional development they would need and what their priorities were. Um, and we are following up with a post survey at the end of this year, um, at the end of this last year in July, going through that work and uh, continuing with another pre-survey and then another post survey as we work in more professional development and build out more of what we can bring to our learning communities, our cohorts. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Technology can be a powerful tool for transforming learning and adult education, as we mentioned, um, and leading us into this next part. Um, in uh, the Illinois D Digital Learning Lab, the community of adult education uh, instructors, administrators, uh, subject matter experts, and learners, um, this was pre-COVID. And you could see the classrooms, you could see our meetings. Uh, you could see our working groups, uh, the learners, the, the IDL participants, those instructors, administrators, and guests uh, from our many events um, throughout those two years uh, pre-COVID. And then even my tech visits uh, with a lot of the material that was purchased through funding from IDL uh, for each participant and their organization, their program, um, just some of the technology as um, I was able to deliver it and look at their program, look at their setups, and, and in many cases, help them set up this new equipment. And as we look at 2020 to present, our, our Zoom learning continued, our deliveries were masked, but our, our rooms um, still had students in them, maybe a little less and a little further distanced but uh, we continue to work with our projects um, in many of the ways that we, we had been working even before COVID. And that was virtually. Next question on the Jamboard, another professional development needs example. Take a look at that. So we shrink longstanding digital equity and inclusion gaps. Um, and hopefully through um, what we put together in these projects and um, through um, the learning that's happened um, and, and much of this, we can continue to um, work with this. And what I wanted to show you real quick was our Illinois Digital Learning Lab Google site, um, which I share my resources page quite a bit, but I wanna, so I have the time, a little bit of time here to go over um, some of the other parts uh, of this website and let me see if it gets me there. And there we go, okay. So um, as we look at our, um, our site, this is our resource site, but this is our home page here. Um, it's just some, some great pictures of uh, our meetings, our workshops, um, you know, some of the uh, deliveries that I, I mentioned and, and just the, the great excitement of, of putting together some new equipment for our learners. Some of our, our learning uh, amongst ourselves here and uh, just looking at 
uh, examples of what we were able to succeed in and what we were able to accomplish uh, with our learners and these new devices uh, as we work through them. Um, and um, just a, a lot of happy faces through the state of Illinois as we work through a lot of this stuff. Uh, we have our project purpose and so on and um, a way to keep in touch with our newsletter and to find uh, help on uh, where your nearest uh, adult education location is. Um, as we look at the community, uh, you know, and, and joining the conversation and um, letting us know what's working for you uh, to our resource page where we've compiled um, a number of resources uh, for building uh, these technology, uh, digital literacy, uh, uh, resources, uh, rich rooms, um, where you can go into each one of these. Um, for example, if I was to go into uh, digital literacy, online assessments, skills and learning, um, you can look at a um, Google Doc that has a number of uh, website ideas which are free and um, you're able to um, use these resources um, for building out your lessons and activities. Uh, as you can see here, everything from uh, Coursera to uh, the digital homeroom um, and how to develop some digital literacy surveys um, and some that are ma easy made for you already. Um, as well as uh, Google Applied Digital Skills and more. And every single one of those resources, for example, the digital literacy one would open up like this and you have the name, the link and a summary of what's going on. These pages are here because they've been successful for others and myself um, in building these uh, free engaging activities um, and um, vary uh, the way they're delivered. Um, and the way they're engaged with, which really helps to keep the whole student engagement. Um, we've also developed a series of uh, lab note presentations by some of the experts in the field. Um, and this is part of our continued professional development. There's professional development out there everywhere, especially in the state of Illinois. There's just some great professional development groups that are always putting out information and um, free trainings. And we make sure that people know about it through our social media sites, Facebook and Twitter. But we also have our own um, lab notes that we put together as a series to help those. Now, all of these recordings are in here. The slide presentations are in here. Just a, a great information from those four presentations. Um, we also have another uh, area where we talk. We have our Twitter and social feeds um, in here, um, and as well as um, many of the um, places that, that has written about the Illinois Digital Learning Lab. Um, and their, um, what's going on in the, in the lab. Um, and all of these are in here as well uh, for people to look at and read and uh, find out a little bit more about us, but also learn some more of what's happening in the digital literacy field um, the technology. Um, the latest news and so on, including our um, Facebook, group um, QR code that gets you right to the Facebook group and signs you up. We'll, we'll be having live uh, information uh, being brought out of our Facebook group soon. This is live information coming out of our Twitter page. Um, and that is continuously updated uh, on our site. Um, IDL past uh, and upcoming presentations. And these are presentations that we've done for IDL throughout. Um, I think that we have a, um, presented at COABE three years in a row with links um, and, and through a number of um, state as, uh, association conferences uh, throughout the country as well, talking about IDLL, talking about these um, uh, learning communities and uh, how we can put together these action groups um, and, and so on. And um, if we go over to more, we have everything that's happened 
throughout those years. And we have I IDLL 2018 um, with um, quite a bit of information there and videos um, and uh, closing uh, activities and well, as well um, from that year, uh, which had a lot of information and it's some great presentations, some great professional development, as well as in uh, 2019 and 2020, and many of the things that we did that year, including our launch, our three midpoints, um, basically many conferences that we had midpoints, all presentations given by um, IDLL participants, and all of those are in here um, as well. And as we move through this, uh, looking at this year, um, once again, all the participants in this year, as well as um, and some of these are not coming up right now, but they will um, on your page, um, as well as um, obviously many of our virtual, uh, our launch or midpoints and our closing events for last year and the year before the closing event was all conducted virtually, but uh, just some great pictures and um, uh, some great information and continued learning. Um, I encourage you to look through it um, when you get a chance and we're always updating information. We are putting in a um, North Star tab where we talk uh, mainly about North Star resources. Uh, we're gonna have some interviews with those that use North Star successfully and some other great stuff that uh, will be coming forward on that tab within that um, IDLL Google site. Um, so the next question on there in the um, Jamboard, professional development needs, facilitating and proctoring virtual assessments. Uh, just another example of the questions that we gave. We, we tally all of these um, results. And I just wanted to show you some example of that data and creating these surveys, creating these um, and looking at the results of these surveys and being able to gauge what's going on and how to prepare uh, for continued learning, continued uh, collaboration and engagement. Um, these were some of the questions, um, the results of those questions from instructors um, and staff and um, self-efficacy towards educational technology. And as you look at here, um, you can see that a lot of it a lot of the responses uh, look towards uh, more of that this is a high priority. Um, and you can see by some of the examples here to the right, how much heavier it is, that gives us the sense of learning these, uh, that they feel this way. Um, however, um, we wanna make sure that we have 90 to a hundred percent of those um, in the, the very, top four and five that they feel confident that they um, are you know that they're determining the right things we want them to feel confident for all of them um, looking more like number eight i feel confident that i can regularly incorporate technology into my lessons or uh, as we look further down how can we um, increase those and then just looking at the professional development those higher priorities as you can see, the red is the high priority. Uh, most of these were very, very red heavy and noting the high priority for professional development in a lot of these areas, um, which was very important for us to know and then to continue to develop these opportunities for um, professional development. And I wanna go back to the presentation here and just show you a little bit of the student surveys um, let me see if I can open this one here. So some of the student surveys, um, we talked about virtual learning questions. And um, as you can see, these are the results. Uh, the top um, graphic is for the English and the bottom graphic is the Spanish results. And so some of the questions we ask, uh, you know, do you use particular devices, computers, tablets, and so on. So we had some good responses. Um, the first part of this um, survey, it's very interesting, um, was um, 
for this year was right after um, COVID had began and we, we had that quick switch to virtual. And in the process, we actually, uh, many of our learners left programs and because they were not too sure about handling this virtual learning. So many of those that stayed behind had um, you know, been acquainted already with some of these resources, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, um, and, and some of the uh, learning tools, the computers, the tablets, and, and that's why they stayed behind. They felt comfortable using those, um, and so they stayed on for virtual learning. So the scores are a little skewed at the beginning. Later, we found uh, a little bit more of an adjustment, and now as we continue, we're starting to see um, you know, that where we have a very low number of, of identifying or being comfortable using. And then we start to see that increase as we continue to incorporate uh, digital literacy skills and technology integration within the classroom and um, hybrid virtually. Um, and as you can see some of the other results there, uh, do you know how to send, share documents as email attachments, uh, still having um, 20 to 25 percent of your students not knowing how to do that um, is definitely something that we have to tackle and make sure that we get it there closer to a to 100 percent. So those that was an example of those uh, results, and then of course we we had the post um, which looking at the post real quick. We started to see uh, more of a real story um, as we um, start to see lower engagement with a Chromebook and a tablet and even a desktop computer. Um, but of course, we've always seen a very high engagement with smartphones and, and that is um, something we've looked at and studied and, and um, know that we the importance of building those skills and uh, being able to have apps uh, or material resources that support the use of a smartphone is just very important. You know, things like QR codes and so on. Um, and we start seeing these numbers, um, it looks similar, but in, in other ways um, start to look a little bit more real. Um, so working with technology would make me nervous. And as you can see here, it's a pretty big amount there, right? The 76%. Um, and even in uh, given to the, the in Spanish as well, um, we have 44%, pretty high percentage. Um, looking at, I expect to have little use for technology in my daily life. And you can see that here. So we started to see a, a more real look at this um, during our post tests, which was uh, um, some of our post post tests, which were a little later on. And these post tests are given, the pre-test is the beginning of each term, the post is at, at the end of each term. And these were those that were towards the end of the year. So we're starting to see a, a better picture because it makes sense with some of the learners coming back um, as we start to move back to in-classroom and uh, keeping a lot of the virtual um, components as well. So I'm going to go back here and just show you a quick example of um, a post-student survey. Uh, we surveyed 317 students throughout the state of Illinois and uh, just looking at their post-survey. Now you can see that most of these are at the 90% level when we started uh, with this. And uh, the reason I'm not showing this uh, because it's actually a number of surveys uh, that are pre and post combined to look at um, pre and post at the beginning and end of each term. Um, we saw these advances from 60 to 70% uh, to 80 and 90%. And of course, as the uh, terms continued and some students started uh, were coming back two or three terms, obviously you can see that getting a little bit higher um, and adding to those increases. Looking at um, favorite learning resources, uh, websites, apps, you could see here, it, it was everywhere. We had so many uh, that were successfully used and our students got a lot out of. Um, very very uh, 
in, informative um, uh, feedback from our students to continue using these or to adjust and maybe uh, go back to the drawing board and look for something else, um, which really helped us to put that list together. Uh, successes with North Star grew throughout the year and each year that we've done this, um, we actually had uh, 32 organizations because of some Illinois Digital Learning Lab organizations and all of the Digital Learning Lab organizations and some of our um, Chicago Citywide Literacy Coalition members, um, all using North Star under our network umbrella. Um, over 2,200 assessments were taken and over 1,400 assessments were passed. Uh, over 1,000 North Star certificates were earned and, and over 400 North Star badges were earned. Um, we've recently added a um, North Star office hours through Zoom. Um, we are, as I mentioned earlier, adding a tab to our website about everything North Star. Many other things found in, on the North Star page, but our, ours will be one tab and we'll have hopefully even more resources that are not found on the North Star page some of our own suggestions on how um, to continue to learn outside of North Star, to come back into North Star, um, and maybe using their curriculum as the outline and building that uh, with other resources uh, and other support. Um, we looked at, um, and this is a very important part of our project, is selecting resources to support learning with technology. Where are these resources? How do we select them? How do we evaluate them um, as a cohort, as a, pro a project? Um, so we looked at various ways to, uh, for this. Um, you know, technology is not an event. It's part of everyday learning. It's part of your learning, your subject topics, right? Um, your math, your social studies, your science. It's not, hey, it's technology time, it's digital literacy time. It's no, digital literacy is part of, of literacy. It's part of, of life. So everyday learning. Um, we have to make sure that we keep that approach in our minds. Uh, so technology integration, two approaches. Uh, we look at lead with the technology or resource and as you can see there, there's our technology, right? Or resources, and then bring that over to the learner and then lead with the learning experience. So that's our other approach, looking at leading with a learning experience. So we have that learning experience, right? Now, how do we bring in the digital components to support that learning experience? So either way, there's no right or wrong. It's how you're incorporating it with your clientele, right? With that learner. Um, we have um, the instructional phases. We have the warm up. We provide a broad overview of the content, the concepts, the skills to be taught during the lesson. We introduce or demonstrate information or variety of modalities. That's the presentation phase where we use it visual and written. Then we hit the practice stage where we engage learners, right? Uh, in activities to practice the new uh, skills and concepts and, and continue to build on that. Um, we have the engagement approaches. So we have learner instructor. So learners engage with the instructor of the lesson, right? We continue with learner and learners. So learners engage with other learners during the lesson. These are all engagement approaches. Um, and hopefully you can see how they can be done both um, hybrid virtually and, and or in person. Um, learner and content. So the learners engage with the instructional materials. So as we can see these engagement approaches here. We have um, looked at, you know, developing learning experience maps. So we have that warm up, we have the presentation, we have the practice, that's the instructional phases. And then we have learner and learners. We pair these up with the different approaches to learn. Instructional phases with the approaches. Um, and as you can see here, um, let me go back here real quick. We have the warm up, 
um, and the presentation and the practice, and we um, can map these in our planning, um, creating those materials that would go in here to support. So we're looking at those, um, those resources, materials, your lessons that you're putting together, your activities uh, that support that in there. So learning activities, tools, skills to be practiced. And we look at that, we look at those resources we might use for that engagement, for that approach and, and the learning um, support on the left. Um, a great page to look at is the, the top 200 tools for learning, um, just a great resource. Um, and I'm going to take a quick look at it here just to show you how this is set up. So we have the top 300 tools for learning. And as you can see, they're broken up here into the tabs. Uh, the PL um, stands for personal learning. The WL stands for workplace learning. And then the ED is for education. Um, and as you can see here, they have a nice chart that looks at all these top 300 resources. And for example, number one is YouTube. So it gives you a brief description, video hosting and sharing platform. Uh, it gives you some of the analysis of these or more than one. Uh, and then it gives you what place it was in for each one of these categories. Um, and so uh, you can uh, go on the site, of course, and learn a lot more from it. Just a wealth of information here. And as you can see, um, very updated. Uh, this is the top 300 tools for learning for 2021. And um, just uh, some great information for you to be able to look up these things and, and try them out uh, right away. Back to the presentation here. Um, so looking at some of these top tools um, and the categories of digital resources, you know, we have web resources, um, we have document tools. I'm just going through this, some, some blog and web page tools, which many of our organizations actually have looked into and have uh, now ongoing blogs um, for their, for their uh, programs. Um, it's just a, a great feature to have uh, to draw in a more interest, of course. Um, and just some other great stuff here, um, interactive videos, um, form survey and, and quiz tools, um, because we, we need all these things to support our programs in a number of ways. Uh, and these resources can really help. The next question on there, another professional development needs uh, example. I'll take a look at it, give me uh, your feedback. Um, I'm going to uh, briefly look at uh, the instructors and subject matter experts that um, presented throughout the, the years, actually, um, and just looking at, because of their topics, um, incorporating it into this presentation. Uh, I'd like to thank Joy Pack for this instructor efficacy, um, you know, look, using uh, the pandemic shutdown and looking at, at some truth, right? Uh, the immediate transition, the distance learning, all of these were looked at by every cohort in the Illinois Digital Learning Lab and was discussed as a whole as we presented this uh, to our groups and, and looked at uh, what kind of supports we could have here um, for each other. In order to succeed, people need the, the, a, a sense of self-efficacy to struggle together, resilience to meet the inviolable obstacles and inequalities of life. Uh, Albert Bandura, and so true to this project as we work together. Um, so what is self-efficacy and how do we gauge that in our um, programs and in our experiment? So people can identify goals, recognize what they want to change and what they want to achieve, but implementing an action plan to achieve those goals that's not simple. And that's why we need those learning communities. We need those groups. Um, you know, self-efficacy is a belief that one's capacities to organize and execute the courses of action required to manage 
perspective situations. Um, and then of course, the self-efficacy is a belief in a person's ability to succeed in a particular situation. Um, and of course, this, this belief plays a major role in how goals, tasks, and challenges are approached. And we look at that, we look at that in our learners and hopefully carry a lot of those skills and confidence and strength to um, um, their, their families, right? As the instructor started the whole uh, route by delivering that to the learners. Um, people with uh, a weak sense of self-efficacy that, you know, they avoid challenging uh, tasks. They believe that that difficult tasks and situations are beyond their cap cap capability, capabilities, excuse me, focus on personal failings and, and negative outcomes and, and, and quick, quickly lose that confidence, uh, the confidence that we all so much need um, to help to um, develop these skills and pass them along, right? Um, people with a, a sense of strong efficacy, they develop deeper interests in activities in which they participate. They form stronger sense of commitment to their interests and activities, recover quickly from setbacks and disappointments and, and view challenging problems as um, tasks to be mastered. Um, you know, the IDLL, it creates that environment to support um, in instructors and administrators from different areas of adult education. So, uh, you know, we help instructors connect with one another and collaborate, help instructors learn from one another. Instructors, conversations focused on problem solving. And we help instructors achieve small successes because they go such a long way, um, especially where we're at now. Um, in summary, we can view the importance of instructor efficacy through the wisdom of, of geese. And um, I'll, I'll leave this video for you to, to play when you get this presentation. Um, I'm not gonna play it now, but I'm gonna go to um, my next page here or our next slide and talk a little bit about uh, David Rosen who's a subject matter expert and his cohort uh, is called uh, the Building Better digital bridges team, um, just to talk a little bit about his team um, and just some very um, great successes that his team had and he kind of put together this presentation talking about those obstacles and successes um, and his cohort and explaining it a little bit. I'm not gonna go through every single person in his cohort, but just touch on some of those highlights. And of course, please um, read these, he's great reading. Um, and those people involved in his cohort and their point of view um, as they develop through this project. Um, you know, the IDLL uh, as an action research or teacher or classroom uh, research with the focus on helping learners use technology effectively for learning. Um, we try out um, a, a, we're cutting edge technology and that's what we do. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, everything from the um, swivel robots to the owls, uh, looking at those classroom cameras to build, uh, you know, blend flex learning, any type of hybrid learning, uh, peer learning among team members. We support for the team members, organizations and situations, um, you know, um, institutions, uh, work teams, organizations or institutions. Uh, work teams and and develop developing a capacity for the field, uh, which is just a very important part of this. And his team did so much with. Um, one of our participants was very successful in a number of um, uh, metrics, uh, goals and metrics uh, through the I IDLL, um, the lab experience. You know, for her, um, uh, the makeup of her students and um, what um, other additions there were uh, during that time. Uh, as she talks about it, she talks about the, the classroom technology and um, how it varied from fall to spring, um, you know, the access to certain Chromebooks and then having more uh, than having iPads as well to add to it. The resources they use like Burlington Core and D2L as their learning management system, the G Suites, the Quizlet, the Zoom, having quantitative and qualitative uh, surveys and um, assessments to know how these resources are working and the levels and skills that are growing and building on each other. 
um, this the skill development collaborator collaboration through G Suites, um, these these rich conversations and um, in, in D2L, the ability to access at, and and post materials and the technology use outside the classroom using Burlington, which her students average 10 hours per students remotely, the asynchronous conversations, uh, Zoom, 90% uh, attendance uh, post pandemic, which was just incredible uh, because that really showed that seamless transition from those that have, had been in the IDLL uh, or were in the IDLL uh, project uh, during the start of the pandemic and throughout. Um, you, you, we had uh, the, the countries that were in there, the native countries and the, and the examples of work and so on. Um, it's just a, a great study of her class and that was able to continue um, looking at uh, jobs that they wanted and they build these on uh, virtually to explain to others via Zoom, uh, other classmates um, as well. And uh, you know, just that successful transition as you can see here into a full class virtually um, and working through that. And many of the lessons learned, you know, digital literacy, not a skill, it's, it's a language. We, we teach and integrate techniques from day one at every level using whatever you have, right? Um, and, and keep it simple, resources are overwhelming. Mastering a few good tools is much more effective than touching on many, And it's, but it's, it's good to have that repository somewhere, right? Where when you have time to add another tool or switch one over, you can go easily look at it, study it, uh, become acquainted with it and, and onboard your students to it and start giving them activities and, and build the engagement because you're giving them something new. Um, own your place. Um, and I am a digital immigrant. Use the funds of knowledge in your classroom. Uh, group students to leverage their expertise, you know, build community. Uh, techniques used in the, uh, the classroom were, were critical to our post-pandemic survival because students were onboarded while they were in the classroom, which really was an advantage, right? Uh, challenge, virtually building communities. We saw later as new classes coming in that it was more of a challenge to keep modeling online, to have uh, breakout rooms and to have uh, Zoom office hours and meetings outside the Zoom to continue to model and, and make sure that we got students on board um, and onboarding them to new resources because we did not have the opportunity to start this in person as we went on through the pandemic. Value of a village, um, you know, lab design, pre, mid, post events, participant teams, statewide variety of sites, subject matter leaders, all of this um, was uh, an eye opener for many of our participants because they saw us coming together from all over the state and our subject matter experts um, being well known throughout the country and, and vice versa, just bringing this information in and out of the state and throughout as we were able to share in these um, learning groups. Um, the whole experience uh, continues to grow. Um, we continue uh, to branch out and talk with other states programs um, to help them build their own learning community, their action group, their experimentation group, their, their community that learns together with their learners. We are able to um, build a shell for this environment and share the obstacles and successes that we've had in putting these learning communities together and growing them. And maybe other organizations follow along and maybe other projects that are state or even regional uh, to lead in this, as well as creating a supporting um, knowledge or efficacy of uh, digital equity and inclusion as we continue to do that as well in the Illinois Digital Learning Lab. And I thank you for attending. Uh, I thank you for viewing this and the Jamboard um, engagement stays open. 
So please go in there and put in your input. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your ideas, and thank you so much. <laughs>